Y'all are familiar with the phrase cage stage Calvinist? Yeah. Uh, stuck in a cage, or should be stuck in yeah, a cage. Right. Probably should be. Um, how does, how does a, a young person usually know if they are one of these? And then if they are, what, what should they do about it? I think they're more concerned with winning an argument than really winning someone over to Christ uh -huh. and to the truth. So it, it becomes a competitive thing, like I've got to win this argument. <laughs> yeah. And in football, we say you outpunch your coverage. Um, I mean, you, you're just coming on so strong that your bottom line is just simply to win, win this argument. Yeah. I think, I think the reason people are a cage stage, man, that's hard to say, cage stage Calvinist is because, is because they don't realize they are. They have no idea how they come across. They have no idea how abrasive they are. I, I say they, because uh, I'm distancing myself from this, mostly right. out of bad memories. I'm sure you never struggled with this. Never, or, no. Or all of my fellow Wheaton College classmates thought I was <laughs> a, a dear, humble person who never argued about anything. And I'd like to publicly apologize to all of them. But uh, yeah, but there's, there's an utter lack of self-awareness right. because yeah, there's, whether it's a new discovery or in my case, I grew up in Calvinism, and so I was more familiar with it than I was in like knowing Jesus personally, being defined by grace. And that's a you get those things out of order, and it gets ugly fast. Yeah. Um, and it yeah, it just something something had to knock the shine off me. It was some more humiliation than humbling, though. I'll be honest. Yeah, I think as a recovering former cage stage Calvinist, it's so easy to want to like put everything through that filter, as though. Mm -hmm. You want to, you know, you're at the bookstore. Well, is this person a Calvinist? Like, is, is, is that preacher Calvinist? Can I listen to him? Um, like, they're still going to have good, helpful... There's like ratings of Calvinists. Right. You're like, How God, are they? Don't, totally, don't totally trust that guy. This guy's a better Calvinist. Yeah. You know, there's... I only want a fellowship with yeah. other Calvinist Christians that even though they're Christians, they're in Christ. And though we may disagree about election or predestination, but Christ is their life, mm -hmm. not Calvin. And that kind of, like, I think that's the real hyper-Calvinism, when we lift up Calvinism as this is the grid through which we judge everybody and look for fruit. As if that's the fruit that I only have fellowship with you if you're a five-point Calvinist. In some ways, that sort of zeal is typical of any young convert, right. no matter what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. you, you learn something new, you get excited. Yep. Right, that's typical. And I think... Why we associate it to some extent with, with Calvinists these days in part is because Calvinism offers sort of a solid, you know, set of doctrines and a, a grid for viewing life in the world that mm -hmm. frankly is missing, especially in this particular, you know, secular age, this age of postmodernism and every, you know, all truth is relative and who really knows and everything's relative. You know, people live in, in some ways in so much squish out there. Yeah. You get this this vibrant set of doctrines, and, and it's beautiful. It's glorious, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, to, to, to give credit to, to the cage stagers, to, <laughs> the silver lining is there's a sin in sense in which, you know, yeah. they've found this precious pearl in the field, and they, they want to share it, yep. this treasure. They want to share it. And that, that's a great thing. Yeah. You know, so I don't want to discourage the young new convert. Yeah. To, if, to understanding the doctrines of grace, to say, hey, yeah, these are good things to right. talk about. It's just learning how to talk about it with wisdom yeah. that as immature people we don't naturally do. Yeah, and the encouragement would be to share it as opposed to, like, bludgeon people with it. Yeah. Like, if I'm, if I'm sharing a meal with Jeff, there's a, there's a calmness, a, a, an enjoyment, a graciousness, a serving, as opposed to, like, throwing food at him, yeah. which is more of the cage stage, like, insanity of, like, I've discovered this truth, and I will... I will hammer it into you. Yeah. I will beat you into submission with this beautiful thing. Yeah, it's like cage stage is when Calvinism becomes the plumb line that you only care about Jesus if you agree with me on all five of these points. Like you're only yeah. worth having fellowship with if you agree with all five of these points. Now people don't say that explicitly because we would know that's a betrayal of the gospel. Sometimes they do. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Those, I mean, they, they're, the I, remem ones. I remember having conversations with the, you know, cage stage Calvinists, and they, they, you know, the responses to disagreements are like, well, you need to read your Bible. If you don't believe this, then you don't believe. I mean, just these these outlandish statements that that rule out the genuine faith and love of Jesus of anybody who disagrees with any aspect of their theology. So, it, there, it can go there, and it yeah. gets it gets really ugly. Yeah, I think it goes back to what we we're saying earlier. If Christ is not the center, yeah, 
And I think Cage stage becomes when you start looking for everything and all you want to talk about is Calvinism, which is fun to talk about. I mean, we're here talking about Calvinism, but hopefully we're getting to Christ because total depravity is important if it shows us Christ, the one who wasn't totally depraved and who became depraved on the cross for us and that we were chosen in Christ and that Christ died in our place and we're drawn to Christ by Christ and we're held by Christ. Like Calvinism's we, we become cage stage when we lose Christ in our Calvinism. Yeah.